What's up guys? So this is the first Rockstead I've ever had. And I have to say I am extremely, extremely impressed. As you would imagine it would be. Um, quick backstory, I did a trade for this knife. The previous owner of this knife absolutely loved it. It just uh, wasn't their style. They've owned it, I believe, for more than two years. Use it all the time, never sharpened it, it's still sharp. Uh, sadly, I have not gotten to experience the factory edge on these knives because from what I hear, the Rocksteads, I mean, I'm talking dozens of people who I know personally have thousands and thousands of dollars worth of knives that use a variety of different steels, and they say the Rocksteads are literally the best. This is like a step above all the Chris Reeve stuff, Striders, I mean, you name it. As far as production knives go, Straight out of Japan, Rockstead is supposed to be number one. Now, I've heard of different Rocksteads before. Uh, the very first Rockstead I ever saw was actually through a YouTube video. Uh, I believe it was Jim Skelton's, if I'm not mistaken. I think it was a Shin, and I remember looking it up and thinking like, oh, it's awesome, I wanna try it, it's the best of the best. Okay, cool, price tag, $1,200 <laughs> or more, I forget, something like that. Now, Rockstead does do uh, folders. They do a couple fixed blades. Uh, their folders go anywhere, I think, from like seven to eight hundred for the cheaper ones. The cheap ones are seven or eight hundred bucks, all the way up to like two grand. Um, and then the fixed blades, I think, are even more. But this was uh, their, I'm gonna say Chow. It's spelled C H O U. In Japanese, I believe uh, it's pronounced Sho or something along those lines. If you speak Japanese, you're probably laughing right now hearing me attempt that. Uh, but I'm a white American guy <laughs> from Jersey. So uh, I'm just gonna call it a chow. All right, because that's how most people are probably gonna say it anyway. And it's definitely not the right pronunciation. But regardless, um, this knife is uh, one of three models. Their neck knife version here uh, comes with a, a cord wrap handle option. They also have a slightly more expensive one that has ironwood scales, which is absolutely beautiful. And you can Google this, the, the Rockstead Chow. Just put that in Google images, you'll see the different versions. But uh, cord wrapped one, which is like a silk cord. Um, the wood scale, which is ironwood, or the most expensive version is the etched version. And basically it's, I mean, all three are literally the exact same knife. It's just the etch one has like a wave etching on it. Very beautiful as well, but to be honest, I think the coolest one is the one with the wood scales. So price, as you saw from the title, most expensive neck knife, right? The base version, this one, the cheap version, is over $300. This is a $320 knife, okay, depending on where you get it. Um, the more expensive one with the ironwood is about $390, like close to $400. And then the etching one is over 400, it's like 430 plus. So this is, to the best of my knowledge, the world's most expensive production neck knife. All right, if uh, you know another production neck knife out there that's more expensive, well, let me know down below. Uh, of course, neck knives could be of all sizes, but I'm, I'm talking just a small neck knife. That's how I've carried this, that's how it's, you know, carried by most people who own these. So uh, yeah, my first Rockstead. I have to say, I'm, I am extremely impressed. Um, this one, I was told, the previous owner bought it new, and again, used it for two plus years, just never sharpened it, never did anything with it. The steel they use on this, uh, I believe it's a Hitachi steel, it's YXR7. I've never had any experience with it. When people talk about the steel, like on the forums, immediately people you know, ask, hey, are you talking about Rocksteads? Because it's very well known uh, to be used by this company, which is in Japan. Um, so getting this knife secondhand is a little bit different because I would have liked to experience the original factory edge. I'm still on the hunt for one of the other ones, you know, in the future, not definitely not anytime soon, but down the road, I'd love to get a brand new unused one, either the etched version or the one with the scales, uh, just so I, I can really experience that, that factory edge. So here's what uh, I got with this. I don't know what packaging this originally comes with, but uh, I got the paperwork here. Rockstead, there's their contact information in Japan. It says, this is a high quality knife. Treat it as such and it will serve you long and well. We have maintenance here and avoid abuse. Okay, the other side, limited lifetime warranty. When you buy these from dealers, they do give you a link usually to uh, like a registry so you can register it as an owner. Besides that, we have a laminated card here with all the specs on here. You can read that. 
All right, and also a soap bag, which is actually really beautiful. Nice uh, cranes on there. So let's put that stuff off to the side here, give you some quick specs on this. Our blade or cutting edge is 1.8 inches. It's 4.7 inches overall and it weighs 2.1 ounces. Again, this one has the silk string wrap. Now, when I got this from the previous owner, the cord was with the package, but it was not on the knife. So I did this wrap. This is not how it comes. This is just how I decided to do it, just to keep it on there, all right? Um, it's very comfortable in the hand. There is jimping on the back, which is purposeful. And you can see just, I mean, attention to detail. Even though it's a small, simple, sharpened piece of metal, it is very well done, extremely well done. This is uh, DLC coated, and then they go back afterwards and they highly polish the grind. So you can see there's a mirror finish on the edge here. You can see the, the camera, the painting in the background. All right, and what's interesting with this grind is that it steps down. So we have our main grind, then we have a secondary angle change there, and then our third angle changes the actual edge. So what this does is this kind of helps push material out of the way for cutting. Now, again, this one being used for two plus years um, and never being sharpened or anything, this is how I got it when I first got it. The first thing I did was start using it because I wanted to try out that steel. Uh, and it worked great. It's very, very sharp. I would say right now it's as sharp as most of my knives. Um, I will eventually go back and really refine this because I want to see how sharp I can personally get it myself Because uh, I do believe it can get even sharper than what it is right now I mean people who have these things they, they literally call them scalpels and what's interesting too is unlike a scalpel It has a, a pretty thick You know angle to it. So you get that wedge effect like I'm talking about because it's not a very wide blade All right, if you look at it down this way, you can see it looks fairly thick but um you know, it still cuts like a razor blade, but you have that strength behind it instead of a literally a thin razor blade that doesn't have any stability. By the way, the uh, the YX R7 steel is Rockwell 265, which is ridiculously hard. All right, that's why it maintains that edge for so long. Uh, offhand, I can only think of one steel that's Rockwell higher. I think uh, I could be wrong. You guys can correct me because there's a lot of steels out there, a lot of information, but I'm pretty sure. ZDP 189 is above 65. It might be like 67 or something like that, but um, Yeah, I mean, it's just that's ridiculous absolutely ridiculous So I'm gonna do a quick little cut test as it is. I have not done this in a while But I'll Put this down so I don't cut my table here. Here's a phone book local phone book smaller one But I want to try this. I was slicing paper earlier and not done this in a long time, right? So I'm just going to apply downward pressure, just push cut. So it's sharp, but I do believe these things brand new are way sharper than that was even. Uh, did have to use a little bit of downward pressure for that. Um, from what I understand, when people get these things brand new, you could take a phone book like that and just use about half that pressure. Just very moderate, just, it just cuts right through everything like butter. But uh, I will eventually sharpen this up myself again it's going to take a lot of time and patience and because there's such a, a fine polish on the grind i have to make sure not to scratch that up otherwise it'll look like crap but um but yeah so in the future i will certainly do that sharpen it and strop it up but yeah you can see there's the uh the model name and the character which i'm assuming is japanese for that word and again rockstead on the front this is their kind of trademark cutout so we have a hole drilled and then a slot cut into it. I believe that's on older knives. This one does have a little bit of a swedge up front here. It's not sharpened or anything. Nice point on it. And yeah, it is very comfortable to hold in the hand. Her sheath looks very nice. First off, the bowl and chain necklace did not come with it. I popped this on here so I can carry it right away. The, the day I got it, I wanted to make a, a paracord necklace for it, but I figured it take too long. I literally just had this laying around, so I popped it on. Carries perfectly on this. I don't know if eventually I'll switch to paracord or not. But uh, anyway, uh, the fitment, you know, is, it's okay. It's not bad. If I shook this really, really hard, I could probably get it to, to fly out. There we go. Okay, so when I pop this in, you can see there's a little bit of wiggle room here. All right, now even in the, the downward position, if I shake this back and forth, 
doesn't seem like it's gonna fall out. If I give it a really good shake, I'm sure I can get it out. I don't want it to flop out here and, and cut into the table, but I, I'm, I don't like the fitment, all right? I want it to snap in. The issue here is I believe the only thing that's actually holding this into the sheath is this cutout here, okay? Because that's pushed in on the Kydex, as you slide the knife in, it kind of sets in place. There's no other design feature here that's really holding that in. So although it's secure enough and, and carrying this every day, I, I kind of keep checking it because I feel like it's gonna fall out. It hasn't, it's secure enough. I just want it to be more secure. I'm, I'm used to knives like, you know, having a hard snap, you know? So like no matter what, it's not gonna fall out. So it makes me nervous. It makes me nervous that I have such a expensive, extremely sharp knife that I feel like it might fall out. So I'm not like totally keen on this particular sheath. Um, I will still carry it like this just to see if it will eventually fall out. Um, but eventually, if I were to carry this on a, for a longer term basis, I'd probably want a, a, a Kydex made that would be able to hold it in, you know, tighter. So yeah, I mean, thus far, it's been very impressive. It's a simple little design, but it's just perfectly done. You know, Japanese quality cutlery. Uh, from what I understand, the people who make these was a, a sword maker. So essentially what you have here is a traditional pocket-sized samurai. Extremely well done, very exotic steel, uh, just awesome. So I definitely want to try one of their folders in the future. You know, 1500 bucks around. I mean, I, the ones that I like are over $1,000. Even though they have cheaper ones, I just prefer those other designs. Just classic Rockstead. I'm glad to have finally tried something from the company. Like I said, in the future, I will certainly uh, sharpen this up even more and see how impressive that steel can get. But thus far, I'm very happy. It's, it's kind of odd to think that this one is very used and dull by its standards and it still cuts just as good as any other knife that I'm carrying today. You know, it outperforms a lot of the knives that I, I EDC. So pretty amazing. It literally is a little pocket samurai from Japan. So there you go. That is the, uh, the world's most expensive production neck knife. I have to say thus far it's lived up to its expectations and just makes me want more knives from the company. So if you have experience with Rocksteads, let me know down below how long you've had it, what model you have, things you like about it, things you don't like about it. The only thing that people don't like about it is having to fork over the money they cost. But anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you guys have a wonderful day and I'll see you soon. Take care.